Hi, this video is all about the geological column, which is the way we geologists organize geological time. Now the geological column was originally determined by looking at the changing fossil content of sedimentary rocks and thinking about global changes in the Earth's environment. It was put together using the principles of relative dating that we've covered in the course, and also evolutionary theory about fossils. Now the names uh, of the different sections of the geological column, sections that we call periods, have some historical roots. For example, the first um, section of time, or the first period, where we find abundant fossils is defined by the rocks that we find here in Wales. These were initially called the Cambrian period, from the uh, Latin name for Wales. So any rocks below that, that came before that, were called the Precambrian. Now the Precambrian is a very large and quite complex period of time. You can see it spans um, over 4 billion years. Now these rocks can be tricky. There are a few fossils to uh, try and uh, determine time periods. The rocks tend to be very heavily metamorphosed. And often they're really quite deeply buried. Despite this, the Precambrian has been split up into three eras. The oldest, the Hedean, which was the very earliest stages uh, of the planet's formation. Um, Earth would be pretty much unrecognisable uh, at that point of time. Followed by the Archean, uh, as the Earth um, and its environment start to evolve. And finally, the Proterozoic, um, which means uh, early or first life which covers the period of time where life evolved from very simple organisms through to more complex organisms that we can start to recognize today. The Cambrian period itself then, um, as I've mentioned, is the first period that contains abundant fossils. We describe this um, rapid evolution of life as the Cambrian explosion. Although, as we'll see, the evidence perhaps suggests that what it actually reflects is a selection of the most effective, most efficient body shapes um, combined with the evolution of hard parts, a crucial step uh, in developing the complexity and diversity of life. In particular, we get trilobites uh, being the dominant uh, organisms at this time. This is followed by the Ordovician period, named after a, a Welsh tribe. Again, it's defined by the rocks we find here in Wales, in particular by the Graptolite fossils. This is where we see very rapid evolution uh, and very distinctive changes in the Graptolites. Other animals that um, evolved at this time include the jawless fish, precursor for um, the vertebrate fossils. The Silurian period, again named after another Welsh tribe with again uh, common rocks found here in Wales, is a period where we start seeing um, some really important developments in the history of life. Jaws uh, on fish, for example, evolve at this time. We find um, incredibly diverse uh, reefs. Um, outcropping along the Welsh borders. Perhaps most importantly in all, towards the end of this period, the evolution of the first plants on land, the first life on land uh, that um, first came out of the sea. Without those plants evolving, there would have been no, uh, no evolution of, of life, of animals moving onto land. 
The Devonian, uh, often known as the Old Red Sandstone because of fairly extensive desert deposits, although ironically desert deposits everywhere other than uh, Devon, shows um, sort of very rapid evolution of, of the fish. The Carboniferous is a fascinating period. It comes from uh, a Latin word meaning coal bearing. It's a period of time of huge diversity of life. Um, it's a, a, a period that shows uh, the evolution of large trees, of insects, marine life. Interestingly, as well, this is the only period that isn't globally recognised. In America, the Carboniferous period is split by a large unconformity. So in America, they'll talk about the Mississippian and Pennsylvanian periods. Everywhere else, though, we talk about the Carboniferous. The Permian, named after a place in Russia, is a point in time where um, Pangaea, this um, ancient supercontinent, uh, is coming together. We see uh, a climate on Earth of very uh, harsh, very arid conditions. The rocks uh, reflect these. Desert sandstones, breaches, evaporites. We also see uh, quite a diverse uh, fauna of reptiles. The Permian, though, is perhaps most noted for what happened right at the end. The biggest mass extinction of all that marked the end of the Permian period. 95% of species on Earth uh, that lived in the Permian didn't survive through to the next period. Now, we think this is down to the eruption of vast amounts of lava in what's now Siberia changing Earth's climates, putting so much environmental stress on uh, animals already struggling with the extremes of a supercontinental climate that they didn't survive. This brings us to the end of the Paleozoic era. As we start the Mesozoic era, we enter the Triassic period, named after the three distinctive rock layers. We get red beds, we get chalk, and we get black shales, representing very different environments. This period, with these enormous ecological niches opened up by the vast scale of the mass extinction that preceded it, meant that we saw evolution of um, the giant reptiles into dinosaurs. We also saw the earliest mammals starting to appear. The Triassic gave way to the Jurassic. Named after the Jura Mountains, this is really the um, age of the dinosaurs. A lot of the very famous dinosaurs, um, like the Stegosaurus, uh, Patasaurus, the giant sauropods, uh, uh, Allosaurus, all lived at this time. It's a time, certainly in, um, in Northern Europe, of shallow seas, chock full of diverse life. The Cretaceous period, named after the chalk that typifies this period, uh, was a long period of time of uh, very warm temperatures and very, very high sea levels. Probably the highest sea levels have ever been. As a result, Marine fossils dominate. Although there was, there was land on which the dinosaurs continued to thrive. Until, of course, the very end of the Cretaceous period, where we have another major mass extinction. The Cretaceous Paleogene mass extinction 
saw about 70% of the species wiped out, including famous ones, the ammonites, the dinosaurs, became extinct this time. The cause of this mass extinction has been the subject of much debate. We know there were very large flood basalt eruptions in what's now India. And at the same time, we had a large meteorite striking what's now Mexico. We'll look at the, in detail at the mechanism of this in another part of the course. It also marks the end of the Mesozoic era. As we move into the Cainozoic era, we have our Paleogene period. Now the Paleogene sees the mammals starting to occupy the ecological niches opened up by the dinosaurs. The climate starts to change as well. Antarctica at this time is drifting towards the South Pole. Pangaea is broken up. Pangaea broke up in the tra uh, Jurassic period. But this cooling, um, lowering of sea levels, uh, led to this, this change in, in life. Mammals and birds really started to, uh, or were able to evolve and diversify. This continued through into the Neogene. Now the Neogene, we start to see even colder climates. We get polar ice caps forming. We even, towards the end of the Neogene, get the first hominids, our, our own ancestors. The Quaternary period, the most recent period of geological time, um, is perhaps the last remaining um, period name from the very first attempts at de de uh, defining geological time. It covers a very, very short period of time, but one in which there's been very intense activity, particularly in terms of changing climate. We devote a whole topic of the course to this period. Now, part of the Quaternary period is the Pleistocene. Then the Pleistocene epoch is one that's defined by its ice ages. We see the waxing and waning of ice sheets across Britain, going from its maximum extent, as you can see on the map here, uh, retreating back to make Britain ice-free before uh, a re-advance as climate cools. And we see many repeats of this cycle through this time. While this is happening, humans are evolving. To cope with these changing climates, to cope with this increasing climatic variability, humans develop larger brains, the ability to communicate, the ability to fashion tools and start shaping their environment. This perhaps reaches its maximum during the Holocene Epoch. This is the period of time after the last ice age. This is uh, where we have warm, temperate climates. We do see a lot of extinction at this time. Some of it down to natural causes, some of it down to humans. But this is the period that we're living. Or is it? It has been suggested that we've entered a new period of geological time, a new epoch called the Anthropocene. Okay? It means the new human time. And it's been suggested because there are geologists who believe that the scale of human activity now rivals geological processes. We study this in more depth in year 13. But it's a fascinating idea. All of these ideas come together in our geological column. It's really important for us as geologists to know how this fits together. 
it's really how the if you like the chapter headings in our story of the year we must know the sequence in which they occur otherwise our story becomes fragmental okay we can piece together the history of life on Earth and define it by its geological periods. But all of this is the application of the ideas that we learn in class. Relative dating, using fossils, and analysis of sedimentary rocks. Don't forget to come up with your interesting question and bring it along to class. I'll see you then.